Hi friends, welcome to my channel and welcome to yet another important video in the history of English literature series. So far we have covered four videos in this series and we have also covered four ages in those four videos namely Anglo-Saxon, Anglo-Norman, Age of Chaucer and Age of Revival. And today in this fifth video we are going to talk about Elizabethan period. Elizabethan period is said to be one of the most important period in the history of English literature. This is known as the golden period. Why? Because some really, really amazing writers, some really prominent writers were born in this period and they started writing in this period. And one such example is Mr. William Shakespeare. So Elizabethan period started in the year 1558 and it continued till 1603. And during this period, a lot of important socio-economic changes happened in England. The first important thing in regards to this period is that Elizabeth, the queen, the great queen, was ruling England during this period. She is known as the Virgin Queen because she never married. And she brought a lot of political stability in England because she was the queen during whose period England was very stable. Uh, as we saw in the Age of Revival that various uh, wars were taking place uh, in regards to France and England and also civil war was taking place between the uh, houses of York and Lanchester in England itself. But during this period of Elizabethan age, there were no wars. And because there were no wars, people started working towards various other art forms. And one such art form was literature. Also at the same time, in the age of revival, we saw that printing press came to England. And now that printing press is in England, a lot of books can be written and can be circulated in the society. So printing press was one such invention which changed how literature was seen in England. At the same time, this was a period when a lot of sailors went to distant lands and new lands were discovered by England. So it was this time when Columbus uh, went into a sail and he discovered one of the most finest countries. At the same time, you find that British colonization, the period where Britain started colonizing so many nations, this was the period when all of that started. So in short, as you can see that a lot of good changes were happening in and across England during this period. And one of the most important change that you must understand in order to understand the literature and that is Renaissance. So this was a period when Renaissance came into England. Now what is Renaissance? We are going to discuss it very soon in our video. But before that you must remember the fact that Renaissance was a movement that started in Italy but during the Elizabethan period it started having an impact on England itself. So that is the reason why this period is known as Elizabethan period and some people also called it as the English Renaissance. So Renaissance began in 14th century when people started taking interest in the learnings of the ancient civilizations, specifically of Greek and Roman civilization. So Renaissance, if you look at the term, means rebirth. So rebirth of what? Rebirth of the ancient Roman and Greek civilization. People were so amazed by the ancient Roman culture, civilization, their art forms that they sort of wanted that to come back and that is how Renaissance began. Now what you need to understand here when it comes to Renaissance is that Renaissance began in Italy which is said to be the birthplace because Rome was the center of Renaissance. Rome is one of the cities in Italy and Rome was the capital of Roman civilization. So during Roman civilization, all the major operations happened in the city of Rome, which now is a part of Italy. So Italy is said to be the birthplace of Renaissance, where 
all the Roman architecture, art forms are readily visible. Now, these people coming from the northern parts of Europe, they visited Italy and they were dazzled by the Roman art forms, their literature, their culture and they had this love of Renaissance inside them which they carried when they settled in their own countries like Germany, Spain, England and that is how Renaissance spread all across Europe during the 14th and 15th century. What you also need to understand here is that Renaissance spread across Europe by a phenomena called cultural diffusion. Now when it comes to Renaissance, two other important terms that you might come across are cultural diffusion and Renaissance humanism. Now let us understand them one by one. Cultural diffusion is basically the idea where the main idea is spreading across from a center point to others. So just like Renaissance began in Italy and it branched out to other parts of Europe. Similarly, if we have any idea that has a center point and from there it moves on to the other path, that is called cultural diffusion. And then we have humanism. What is humanism? Humanism is a philosophy which says that humans have worth, dignity and power. So humanism basically believes that life should be centered around humanity and reason and it should not be centered around church and its regulation. So we all know that before Renaissance came into uh, England, church was having supreme power over everybody. So even the plays, literature, art, everything was centered around church. But when Renaissance came, they kind of started with the idea that humans are important humans are the finest creation of god and therefore life should be centered around reason which is one of the most important faculty of humans and it should be centered around humanity and it should not be centered around bible and church and its regulations now that we had a detailed discussion on renaissance and on the elizabethan period it is time to look at some famous literary works and some important writers if you look at uh, the works written during the elizabethan period you will find that they belong to either of these two categories either they were dramas written by playwrights or they were poets and some famous sonnets written by them novels did not start during this period so there were no novels at times there were some pamphlets and essays written by writers like Francis Bacon and write Robert Greene but they were not so important. So in this particular lecture I'm going to take you through the major dramatists and the major poets though it is not possible for me to cover each of them in detail because of the time crunch. If you want detailed lectures on these writers you can refer to my online course where I cover each of them in detail. So there are more than 20 lectures on university with 8 lectures on William Shakespeare which I have discussed in my online course. In this particular YouTube video I'm going to quickly take you to, through the major dramatist and through the major poets. If you want the detailed list of writers you can get it free of cost on my website arpatakarva.com. Now let us look at the major dramatist who were writing during this period. Without any doubt we have William Shakespeare as the most important dramatist but I have already made two detailed videos on William Shakespeare in my YouTube channel. You can go and watch them. So I'm not going to talk about him so much in this particular video. I'm going to instead take time and talk about the University Wits. University Wits was a writing group which is said to be the first professional group who came into the field of writing in Elizabethan period. This group had seven members, three of them were graduated from Cambridge, three of them graduated from Oxford and one who is Thomas Crid, he did not go to Oxford or to Cambridge. Now if you look at these seven writers, these are most important writers who started writing before Shakespeare came into the scene and these people took literature and writing as their career. Abhi tak jitne bhi writers, age of Chaucer, age of revival ya Norman period mein likh rahe the, wo sab 
राइटिंग के साथ में और भी बहुत कुछ कर रहे थे राइटिंग वॉज जस्ट लाइक अ हॉबी टू देम बट यूनिवर्सिटी विथ्स के लिए राइटिंग वॉज देयर प्रोफेशन सो दीज व पोइट्स दीज व राइटर्स एंड दीज व पैम्फलेटियर्स वन मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट पैम्फलेट दैट वॉज रिटन बाय रॉबर्ट ग्रीन हु इज अ पार्ट ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटी विट इज नोन एज ब्रॉट विथ मिलियंस ऑफ रिपेंटेंस this was a passage where he talked about shakespeare and his writing talent and he calls shakespeare as upstart crow beautified with our feathers so basically he is appreciating shakespeare's work shakespeare's writing on the other hand we have some amazing works written by christopher marlowe like dr foster's which is centered on the idea of renaissance humanism so uh, foster's ka jo character hai wo दिखाता है कि ह्यूमन रीजन कितना इम्पोर्टेंट है बट एट द सेम टाइम इट शो केस इज द फ्लॉज इन रेनेसा ह्यूमनिज्म कहीं ना कहीं अभी भी चर्च का इन्फ्लुएंस बहुत ज़्यादा हमें दिख पाता है सो दिस वॉज अबाउट द ड्रामेटिस्ट हु आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड हु आर राइटिंग ड्यूरिंग द एलिजबीथन पीरियड लेट इज नाउ टेक अ लुक एट द मेजर पोइट्स एंड सम अमेजिंग पोइट्री रिटन बाय दैम एलिजबीथन पीरियड वॉज ब्लेस्ड विथ सो मेनी अमेजिंग पोइट्स हु वो मोस्टली राइटिंग सॉनेट्स बिकॉज सॉनेट्स वॉज द मोस्ट पॉपुलर फॉर्म ऑफ राइटिंग ड्यूरिंग दिस पीरियड एंड वी ऑल नो दैट इट वॉज हैनरी होवर्ड एंड थॉमस वॉट हु कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड टू ब्लैंक वर्स एंड सॉनेट्स देर इज एन एंटायर लेक्चर ऑन दीज टू राइटर्स एंड देयर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इन द फील्ड ऑफ लिटरेचर दो वी डोंट नो देम टूडे बट इट वॉज बिकॉज ऑफ देम दैट ब्लैंक वर्स विच वॉज द मोस्ट पॉपुलर काइंड ऑफ लिटरी राइटिंग दैट शेक्सपियर इवन यूज इन मास्टर्ड वॉज डन बाय दीज टू पीपल सो इट वॉज हैनरी होवर्ड एंड थॉमस वॉट हु ब्रॉट ब्लैंक वर्स एंड सॉनेट्स इन टू द सीन on top of that we have writers like philip sidney and edmund spenser who did some amazing work in the field of poetry edmund spenser ki agar hum baat kare to spenser is said to be the poet's poet and it was spenser's poetry which somewhere started the elizabethan period and you will be amazed to know that the poetry's name was shepherd's calendar which he dedicated to a friend of um, his whose name is none other than sir philip sidney so philip sidney was a very good friend of edmund spenser and spenser dedicated shepherd's calendar to sidney he is known as the poet's poet as well as it was his poetry which kind of kick started the elizabethan period on other on the other hand we have william shakespeare now uh, for shakespeare i don't think i would be able to do justice if i start talking about his sonnet collection in this particular lecture because he has written some fabulous fabulous sonnets which are very dear to my heart you can refer to my other lectures on william shakespeare which is available on my youtube channel uh, for detailed study of the same and finally we land on to the last poet that we are going to discuss in this particular lecture. actor who is sir philip sidney philip sidney is known as the renaissance man the perfect renaissance man why because if you look at philip sidney he was a courtier he was a soldier he was a writer he was a man of philosophy so he was a kind of person who had everything in himself and he met with a very tragic death so philip sidney ki agar hum baat kare so he died on a war front where he was thirsty he wanted water when he got the water he found that another soldier was thirsty so he gave his water to that man and that is how he died so you can look at the epitome of love and care this man demonstrated but he did not only uh, do justice to humanity but at the same time he became the first literary critic in the field of english literature by writing a famous work and i'm pretty sure that you must have heard about this work in either your bachelor's or your masters and if you know the work that was written by him in the field of literary criticism make sure you comment in the uh, section below and let me see how many of you get it right so with that note we complete our discussion on the elizabethan age where we have discussed about the socio political condition we've discussed about the major dramatist and the major poets 
that's it from my side for this lecture we'll meet very soon in the next lecture till the time we meet next happy learning keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpatakarva.com